But good morning, Facebook. Good morning, YouTube. Good morning, Lighthouse Marketplace Ministries. Uh, for those of you that do not know me, I'm Dr. Leon McCray. It's such a pleasure to be here. I tell you, God is good and he's on the throne. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I won't be, be before you long, but I do have a word that I want to share with you. Just want to give you a little background. Everybody know the story of Joseph. Uh, I want to talk to you a little bit about Joseph. Um, and Joseph had a, a very challenging life, unlike you know, most of us have never had before. Um, Joseph was a dreamer. Uh, actually, he was a prophetic dreamer. And his dreams, uh, they, they had a lot of substance to them. And Joseph dreamed a dream. And actually, he dreamed a dream and he told his brothers his dreams. And uh, his brother hated him because he was... He was the son, um, the favorite son of his father. And so it just tells us that when we have more than one child, we have to be very careful not to play favorites. Amen? Amen. Uh, you know, that's something that I would encourage you not to do. I, I don't even play favorites uh, with my grandchildren. I may have a favorite, but I certainly won't let them know that who's the favorite. Amen? And, uh, and so I encourage you to be mindful of that because, you know, kids can be very jealous and they can be very vengeful and that can grow all, go all the way into their adulthood and, and follow them. And, and such is the case, um, you know, with Joseph. And so his, he told his brothers the dream and they hated him. And then he, the next night he dreamed another dream and he told his brothers as well as his father and mother and they hated him all the more, but his father listened to the dream. He rebuked him, okay, but uh, he listened to the dream and take, uh, took a note of it, okay? And because the dream implied that the brothers, uh, as well as his mom and dad, would uh, be, in essence, uh, in a position where they had to almost like worship him, almost, because he was in such a high position, and that it would be in a position of authority over his brothers and over even over his mom and even over his dad. Uh -huh. Okay, and so that can be a challenging situation if you if you think about it. You know, your child comes up to you and uh, tell you, "Hey, you know, uh, you're gonna have to bow down before me." You know, <laughs> you know what, what do you mean? You know, uh, in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Hallelujah. So you know that he had this dream. Okay. And, um, and so the, the, he was the youngest of the family. And in this particular situation, uh, the older brothers, they went out to, you know, run the, um, you know, uh, the, the cattle or the lambs or whatever the situation was. And the father kept the son back. And, but he sent this son to them, you know, to make sure that they were okay, just to kind of check on them maybe bring him a little food and so forth. And the brothers, they seen him from afar coming to them and they started plotting how, we, how we, we're going to kill him. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, you know, it's one thing to have uh, some animosity, it's a little bit of jealousy, but it's another thing to want to take one's life. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that's, that's kind of kicking it to another level. Mm -hmm. And so... Uh, they plotted to take his life, and, and his brother Reuben, which is the elder son uh, of Jacob, said, hey, uh, let's not do that. Let's not kill him, okay? We can put him in a, a pit and just leave him for dead, but let's not kill him. And in Reuben's mind, I don't know, for some reason, Reuben uh, said that, and he went off in another direction by himself because his plan and his plot was that we're going to put him in a hole, leave him for dead, and then afterward, Reuben was going to come and circle back around after some time and take him out of the pit and bring him back to his dad. Mm -hmm. He had uh, an alternative motive reason he was doing all of this, but that was his plan. Now here Reuben, uh, after this, this is done, Reuben comes back and there's no one in the pit. Mm -hmm. He's thinking he's dead. All right. And the other brothers uh, at the time, they seen a caravan coming. And they said, okay, this is our opportunity that we can make some money 
as a result of this brother. Okay, we can sell him into slavery. And that's exactly what they did. They sold him into slavery. And now Joseph is sold into slavery. Okay. Now, how many of you know that you go from God giving you a prophetic dream to a point where you're thrown into a pit left for dead by your own family, your own brothers, and now uh, you're being sold into slavery by your own family? How many of us can identify that? Most of us have never uh, you know, we've been through some things, but we have never been through that type of uh, uh, animosity. And none of, none of us want to go through that, okay? Right. But I tell you, all of us have went through some level of betrayal. Can I get an amen about that? Yes. We've been through some betrayals, okay? And, you know, even as a pastor, uh, we go through uh, what some would call betrayals. You know, some would say, you know, I, I'll always be with you. I do this, I do that. And all of a sudden, they're not with you. And not only are they not with you, uh, they backbite and they talk about you and all those kind of things. But I, I, I would say this, you know, even when you do things like, you know, you help save their marriage, you counsel them, you spend your time with them, you uh, pronounce blessings of, uh, upon them, you you go to their, uh, uh, you know, hospital and pray with them. You do different things and they they they, they turn on you. We've all had friends that, so-called friends that turn on us, and even family members that turn on us. And so Joseph is not unique in that matter, but uh, the, the depth of, uh, of this uh, situation was is really chaotic and very hurtful, particularly when you think of, God, you gave me this, this, this dream, and you told me uh, all these things would be happening to me, but now I'm in pit duty. I'm in the bottom of a pit. And not only am I in the bottom of a pit, but now I'm seen to be rescued from the pit, and now I see myself being sold into slavery. Okay? All right, so let's pick up there. I want to fast forward a little bit, and the title of my message is this, The Power of a Lesson Learned. The Power of a Lesson Learned. How many know that... <clears throat> When there are various incidents in our life where God is trying to teach us something. Uh, either our parents might be trying to teach us something, or our teachers might be trying to teach us something, or our mentors might be trying to teach us something. And if we don't get the lessons, many times we have to repeat that situation over and over again. How many have been there before? Amen. Okay. And so... Uh, there is power in a lesson learned, okay? So turn with me, if you will, to the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 42. And we want to start there. And if, you know, in your spare time and in your study time, if you want to read, you can really start at about uh, chapter 37 and read right on through, okay? Uh, but we want to fast forward for the sake of time. We want to start at Genesis chapter 42 and want to start at verse 29. Is that all right? Yeah. Hallelujah. Then they went to Jacob, their father, in the land of Canaan and told him of all that had happened to them, saying, the man who is Lord of the land spoke roughly to us, all right, let me bring you forward just a little bit more. Okay. Now, here it is that the famine is now in the land. Remember, uh, Joseph had a dream, but now God has gifted him not only to have dreams, but he can interpret dreams. And so Joseph uh, was falsely accused of, uh, of uh, trying to uh, have his way in, from a sexual position with the wife of Potiphar. Okay, and Potiphar uh, had him put thrown in jail. But how many know Joseph? Life had favor upon him, and so everything that Joseph did, God was with him. Okay, and so Joseph was thrown in jail, and he had great he had great favor in Potiphar's house. He was actually the second in, in, in charge, and Potiphar gave him control of everything that he had and access to everything that he had except his wife. Okay. 
but his wife falsely accused him, and now he finds himself thrown in jail. Now, when he had those dreams earlier, uh, God did not tell him the specifics that he would he would incur such a dynamic shift in his life. How many know that even though we have some purpose and we have vision and we have plan, their calamity can come. There are challenges that will come to us. Amen. And so Joseph now finds himself in jail. But even in jail, Joseph finds himself having favor with the jailer. Okay? And the jailer looks at him and he said, you know, everything that you touch, you know, something good happens. There's prosperity. There's order. Things happen as a result of you being with me and you, as a result of you being in this place. And so Joseph finds himself being second in command in the jail. And so fast forward just a little bit more, there's a butler that used to serve uh, Pharaoh, and there is a, 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 a steward that served Pharaoh. They find themselves in jail, and, jer and they had dreams, they both had dreams, and now they have no one to interpret their dreams. And, but, and they came to Joseph, and Joseph said, uh, you know, I can't interpret dreams, but God can interpret dreams. He always gave the, uh, the adulations to God. He, 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 you know, he was humble like that, okay? And so God gave him the interpretation of both of their dreams. You know, on the butler, he said, you know, uh, in, in three days, uh, basically, you're going to be, uh, uh, the king is going to bring you back into his house and you're going to be serving the king again. And the butler's, uh, uh, the, uh, the baker's dream, he came back and said, in three days as well, uh, you are really going to be killed. Let's just make it plain. All right. And that's exactly what happened. And, and he told uh, the steward, he said, look, you know, when you go back to Pharaoh's house, uh, please remember me. OK, so put in a good word for me. You know how we do sometimes we do some things and say, hey, put in a good word for me. How many know sometimes they don't do it? And, 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 and that was the case with the steward. The steward did not put in a good word for him. Actually, two years had went by and nothing had happened. He had forgot about him. But here, now, Pharaoh has a dream. And all of the magicians and all of the soothsayers and everyone in the camp could not interpret the dream. But then all of a sudden, the steward remembered that there was someone in jail named Joseph, and Joseph was able to interpret dreams. Mm -hmm. And so Joseph was able to go from the jailhouse, get dressed, and now he finds himself in Pharaoh's house. Right. Amen? Mm -hmm. In Egypt. All right? And he told them that uh, I can't interpret the dream, again, giving God the accolades, but God has the interpretation of the dream. And he told Pharaoh the interpretation of the dream, okay? It was two dreams that he had, and he told them those dreams would be the same, okay? And you're going to have seven years of plenty, and you're going to have seven years of famine, but in the years of plenty, okay, you're going to have to store up and really manage in such a way that to, take, to take you through the seven years of famine, okay? And, and, the, and, and the king realized that there's no one that God has given this type of uh, uh, information, this type of knowledge, this type of skill, this type of favor. I'm going to put you in charge. And now he's coming from the jail, and now he finds himself as second in command only to uh, Pharaoh as the as, as the king over the land, as, really as a governor. I call him really as a president because sometimes I won't call him a vice president because a vice president sometimes, as we understand it, it's, it's almost like a figurehead position. They don't really get into uh, really uh, command and authority unless something happens to the president, okay? But Joseph was in a position where Joseph had to do the work. He used to do, he's the, really the one in charge. Okay, so let's pick up here. Then they uh, went to Jacob, their father, in the land of Canaan, and told him all that had happened to them, saying, The man who was lord of the land, Joseph, spoke roughly to us and took us as spies of the country. But we said to him, We are honest men, and we are not spies. We are twelve brothers, sons of our father. One is no more, meaning Joseph. One is no more. And the youngest 
is with our father this day in the land of Canaan. Okay? And then the and then the man, the Lord of the country, said to us, By this I will know that you are honest men. Leave one of your brothers here with me. Take food for the famine of your household and be gone. And bring your youngest brother to me so I shall know that you are not spies, but that you are honest men and I will grant you your brothers to you and to, to, to and so you'll be able to trade in the land. Okay? And pick up here at verse 35. Then it happened as they entered their sacks that surprisingly each man's bundle of money was in his sack. Remember, they are, they are, they are charged with paying for the grain and the, uh, the articles that the king had given them, okay? But now they are on their way back home and they find the money is still in their sack. And when they're, and, and, and they and their father saw the bundle of money, they were afraid. And Jacob, their father, said to them, you have bereaved me. Remember, they're telling their father what has happened. Joseph is no more. Remember, his father loved Joseph, his favorite. Mm -hmm. Simeon is now is no more, meaning Simeon was the one that is left uh, with Joseph. Okay. Uh, he says, Simeon is no more. And you want to take Benjamin. All these things are against me. In other words, he's saying, look, I've already lost Joseph. Simeon is gone. He's no more. And now you want my baby son. I, I, look, I, I'm having some trouble with this, okay? Verse 37. Then Reuben spoke to his father, saying, Kill my two sons if I do not bring him back to you. Put him in my hands and I will bring him back to you. But he said, My son shall not go down with you. For his brother is dead and he is left alone. If any calamity should befall him along the way in which you go, then you would bring down my gray hair with sorrow to the grave. Now, what's noteworthy here is that now, uh, Reuben was the, the brother. He's the eldest son of Jacob. Okay, And he was the one also that told his other brothers, let's not kill him. Okay, let's not kill him. Okay, and and you would think, as an older brother or elder brother, he would have some clout and some influence with his brother and even with his father. Right. Right. Okay. And so Reuben had, you know, going through this, he, he had evidently showed some maturity. Okay, and authority and in a leadership position. Hey, he said, look, you know, I, I, he's telling his dad that, you know, I, I, I'm so confident in this that, you know, I will even offer my two sons. I'm going to make sure that this thing happened. Okay. All right. And, you know, I had to think to myself, well, okay, well, what's, what's the, the problem with that? Okay. Um, Take a look. Okay, take a look at Genesis 35, 22. Just going to take a detour right quick, okay? Genesis 35, 22. Are you there? Yeah. Okay. All right, he says, while Israel lived in that land, Reuben went and lay with his father's concubine. And Israel heard of it. Okay. Um, I mean, know that if you sleep with your father's wife, you might have some trust issues going forward. Mm -hmm. You follow what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so uh, the brothers evidently knew that that was a situation as well. So a lot of times when we get in these situations and we want favor, we want grace, we want people to listen, they are, they'll take you back to what you have done before, yeah. right? Absolutely. Okay, they'll take you back there, all right? But Reuben still was trying to do what he could do, okay? All right, all right, let's pick up at Genesis forty-two thirty-eight. All right, go back to where we were, Genesis 42, 38. Jacob would not allow Benjamin to be taken to the governor in Egypt, but famine 
is still in the land. And the food is almost gone. How many know that when, when there's tribulation, uh, tribulation can tend to change our mind? You ever been in a challenging, challenging situation? You say you're not going to do this, you're not going to do that, but all of a sudden there's a, a test, there's a tribulation, and all of a sudden they try, uh, that, that pressure comes, okay? That pressure comes, and in chapter 43, verse 1, it says, Now the famine was severe in the land, and it came to pass when they had eaten up the grain which they had brought from Egypt, that their father said to them, Go back, buy a little more food. Now, here's Judas, one of the other brothers. But Judas spoke to him, saying, The man solemnly, solemnly warned us, saying, You shall not see my face unless your brother is with you. If you send our brother with us, we will go down and buy you food. This is what he's telling his dad. But if you will not send him, we will not go down. For the man said to us, you shall not see my face unless your brother is with you. And Israel said, why did you deal so wrongly with me? I know, man, you know, you love uh, Jacob, but man, Jacob is all about Jacob. He's really into himself, you know. Uh, you know, you've taken my son. You've done this. You've done that. You know, why did you even tell him about your dad? Why did you even tell him I had another son? Oh, he's really in it. Wow. And, you know, um, you know, sometimes we get like that. And so, you know, it says, uh, then Judah said to uh, his father, send the lad with me and I will arise and go that we may live and not die. Both we and you and also our little ones. I myself would be surety for it. Somebody say surety. surety. Now he says, uh, it says, I will be sure to. Now, his brother Reuben said what? He, he offered his sons, his two sons. But Reuben said, hey, you know, my life, I offer my, my life as surety. Okay. It says, from my hand shall require him. If I do not bring him back to you and set him before you, then let me bear the blame forever. For if we have, had not lingered surely by now, we would have returned the second time. And their father Israel said to them, If it must be so, then do this. Take some of the best fruit of the land in your vessels and carry them down a present for a man, a little balm and a little honey and spice and mirth and nuts and almonds. Take double money in your hand and take back in your hand the money that was returned to you in the mouth of your sacks. In other words, you know, they have the money that they were supposed to pay for the goods before. Uh, Jacob put it back in their sacks. He said, give them back that money. Perhaps it was an oversight. Take your brother also and arise and go back to the man. And may God Almighty have give you mercy and before the man that he may release your other brother and Benjamin. If I am bereaved, I am bereaved. In other words, he got out of himself. Look. If it happens, it happens. You're going to die anyway. You're going to die anyway. And here we see that Judah has taken the leadership role, taken the character role to another level. Remember, now, you, you go to a, from a, a, a level where you, you have uh, so hatred, uh, such hatred for your brother that you're willing to kill him. You're willing to sell him into slavery. And now the shift Life can cause you to uh, to have some lessons learned based on the trials and tribulations and the things that we go through. Correct? And so now he's taking full responsibility for the life of Benjamin. He's learned some things. So say, say, I've learned some things. Anybody learn some things? We've learned some things. Now flip down to uh, verse 19. It says, when they drew near the to the steward Joseph's house, they talked with him at the door of the house and said, Oh, sir, we indeed came down the first time to buy food, but it happened when we came to the encampment that we opened our sacks and there the money was. And we have brought that money back to you. Basically is what he's saying, okay? Mm -hmm. 
And we are now here again. We do not know who put the money in our sex, but he said, peace. Then this is Joseph saying, he says, peace be with you. Do not be afraid. Your God and the God of your father has given you treasure in your sex. Now, you know, Joseph was, uh, he was really a humble man. Now, here he is second in charge. His brothers are now humble themselves before him. Kind of like the dream, what the dream has said. Okay. But Joseph gave the, the, the accolades to God. Okay. That's a lesson for us. And, and, and in verse 26, it says, Joseph's prophetic dream has come to fruition. They bowed themselves to him, to the earth, and in verse 28, they bowed down their heads and made obeisance to Joseph. Now, remember that Jacob is still at home, all right, with, uh, he, he, you know, he's home, but Joseph realized that, hey, I want my family with me. I love my dad. I want my dad with me, Okay. And so in chapter 44, verse 1, and he commanded the steward of his house, saying, fill the men's sack with food as much as they can carry and put each man's money back in the sack. The sack. All right, now here uh, Joseph make a shift. Now he's, he's sending them back home full of uh, goods and supplies and all of that. But remember his end goal is to get his father to come back. Okay? And so... He uh, has his, his, his men put his, gold, his uh, silver cup in Benjamin's sack, okay? And he puts it in Benjamin's sack. They are very much unaware of that, and now they are heading back. Uh, he's, he's tasked them with bringing their dad back, okay? All right? And so they go on their way the next morning, and in the next morning, you know, Joseph sends his his warriors out to go scout them and find out where they at, track them down. And he, he, he says that, hey, you know, somebody has stole my silver cup. <laughs> and, you know, uh, Judah says, you know, why would we do such a thing? We didn't do this. We wouldn't do this to you. As a matter of fact, we, we, even, we even returned the money that was in our sacks you know, just in case it was an oversight. We wouldn't do this type of thing to you, okay? Uh, it's not in us. As a matter of fact, if you find uh, if you find it in any of our sex, we will be your slave, okay? And so uh, the word was, okay, we're going to go ahead and search everyone. And so they started from the elders and they went all the way down to the youngest. Reuben wasn't in his sack. The next one wasn't in his sack. The next one wasn't in his sack. And they get all the way down to the last one, Benjamin. And then, you know, everybody knows that it's not in Benjamin's sack. But they open Benjamin's sack and the silver cup is there. Now they rip their clothes and now they know they're going to die. You know, they know they're in trouble. You're in some serious trouble. Okay. And so, you know, now, uh, you know, they have already put the word out that, you know, we'll be your slave if, if this happens. And so now they got to go back. And he wants to deal with Benjamin. You know, Joseph said, you know, uh, I'm going to let you guys go back, but I'm going to keep Benjamin. Mm -hmm. Now, knowing that their dad I already told them that I would die of grief. If you take my Benjamin, I've already lost my Joseph. Please don't take Benjamin. Now Judah uh, is explaining this situation and to to to, uh, to Joseph. Joseph, the only reason that we're here is because you told us that, uh, and we we told you everything, you know, and and you told us that if if we don't bring Benjamin back. You, you, you're not going to give us anything. You told us not to come back unless we got Benjamin. And I had convinced my father, and I put my life on the line, and said that, you know, I promised my father that Benjamin would come back because I don't want to see this evil come upon my father. Please, please, okay? Uh, take my life. Take my life. 
put me in place of, of Benjamin, okay? And, 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 and you know, at that point, how many of you know that even though you're in charge and these are your brothers, these are your family, you love them, and all of a sudden, uh, Joseph broke. He really broke. And he had to leave the room because he was about to cry in front of his brothers. Okay? And so now he comes back, he gets himself together, and now he has to tell them that, hey, I'm your brother. I'm Joseph, whom you tried to kill, whom you put in the pit, who you sold into slavery. I'm the one. How I many you know they're shaking in their boots? But Joseph let them know that I love you. I want you. I want to save you. You meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. God wanted to save an entire nation, and he wanted to save the, my family as well. I want you all to go back. I'm going to keep Benjamin with me, but I want you to go back and tell my father of the fact that I'm alive. I'm yet alive. I'm alive. And so he, he, he gave... Uh, all of them, he, he just stuffed them with stuff and goods and supplies as, as much as they could carry. And they all went back to their father's house and they told their father and their father didn't believe them. But when he seen all the stuff and they had specific words, how many of you know that sometimes your child can give you a specific word and you know it's them. It can't be nobody else. And then, and he, and he knew it was Joseph. Mm -hmm. And now he says, "Bring them back." And Joseph now comes back with them, mm -hmm. and he's now rejoicing because he has his father, he has his whole family with him. You meant it for evil, but God had a plan in mind. He had, he had a plan in mind. I didn't know it was going to go like this, but hey, I submit my will. I submit myself to God. And I, I say this to encourage you. Sometimes we got, you know, we go through things and we're, we're challenged in, in, you know, in our situations and in our life. We might be challenged on the job. We might be challenged in our marriage. We might be challenged in our, our finances and all those kind of things. But God has a plan and we have to learn the lessons. Why? So we can go to the next level and fulfill our genuine God given purpose. Hallelujah. And we have to believe that God, even though it looks bad, even though they, they meant it for evil, that God, you are going to turn this thing around. I tell you this day, God is going to turn it around yes. for you, no matter what you're going through. Why? Because you believe in a king, the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I'm going to just close here. Hallelujah, got so much here. Hallelujah. In verse 4, and Joseph said to his brothers, please come near to me. So they came near. Then he said, I am Joseph, your brother, mm -hmm. whom you sold into Egypt. Mm -hmm. But now do not therefore be grieved or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. For these two years, the famine has been in the land and there are still five years in which there will neither be plowing nor harvesting. And God sent me before you to preserve a posterity for you in the earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. Mm. Mm. Let me know that God will and is going to deliver us no matter what we're going through. I'm telling you, you can take that to the bank. We serve an awesome God. Amen? Amen. So I believe I've given you what God has uh, given me. But I just want to close with this statement. The power of a lesson learned was demonstrated through Judah when he was willing to give his life in exchange for the life of his brother Benjamin. That his father would not die of a broken heart. In other words, he 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 was you know he was so concerned, right. took such leadership and such authority position, and you know even deferring himself to another, and God blessed them for that, and he found favor in the sight of Joseph. Joseph broke because you know he did what he did. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, I want to close there, but I just want to say a quick prayer for you. 
Father God, I just thank you right now for those that are in this place and they're here, your word, Father God, but even those that are looking on via Facebook and YouTube, Father God, I pronounce, I declare, I decree a blessing upon your people, Father God, those that are dealing with uh, situations of uh, betrayal and so forth, Father God, whatever that situation, Father God, I think you are turning it around to their good in the name of Jesus, Father God. I declare that they are blessed. They are blessed coming in and they are blessed coming out. They are the head and not the tail, Father God. I thank you they have learned the lesson and they will move forward in advance and take their place in the kingdom of the living God. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Hallelujah. For those of you that are looking via Facebook and YouTube, go ahead on and press that like button or share button and also subscribe to my YouTube channel if, uh, if you think this has been a blessing for you. Thank you so much. Remember that God said that I will be with you, okay? And I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Amen. God bless you. Amen.